Hello everyone and welcome back to Miss Key's classroom. My name is Rachel and in today's video I am going to be teaching you all about the Australian Curriculum website. I've had a few requests for this video, uh, people not really sure where to begin with the Australian Curriculum and so if you are a teacher in Australia hopefully you will find this one useful. I'll be going through how I use the website uh, to inform my teaching and show me the kind of things that I should be teaching depending on subject and year level. It's been a little while since I've sat down and filmed a video. I think it's about two months in fact. This term has been absolutely crazy for me and I've been juggling a lot of different commitments and so forgive me for spending so much time away from you guys, but it's good to be back and hopefully you will find this video useful if you are a teacher in Australia. Um, let's just get straight into it. Okay, so I guess I should probably start off by explaining what the curriculum is and how it is used in Australian schools. Um, so the Australian curriculum was introduced to, I guess, reform the Australian school system a little bit to make sure that all of the students in Australia were learning the same curriculum. And it sort of sets the expectations for what the students should be taught within each subject uh, at each year level all the way from foundation up until year 12. So the idea behind it is that teachers can go onto the Australian Curriculum website, look up their year level and the subject they're teaching and see all of the things that they are meant to cover in the year for that age group and for that subject. So as an Australian teacher, it is really important, I guess, to be across the Australian curriculum, regardless of whether you are a university student studying teaching, an early career teacher or an experienced teacher, because this is sort of where we would go to to make sure we're teaching the right things to the right year levels. Um, they also have just done an update of the Australian curriculum from version 8.4 to version 9.0. Um, so they do sort of like a review, I think it's every five or six years, um, to see what they want to keep in the curriculum, maybe what they want to change or add. And so there is a new version that's just come out. Uh, it's being rolled out over the next couple of years. And so the older version, the 8.4, is still available and you can still access the website for that. And then there's the new updated 9.0 sorry, website as well. Uh, I'll show you both websites today because depending on your school, uh, they might still be using the older version. They might be updating to the new one. Um, and so I'll show you both websites today so that you can navigate either website. They're set out in a similar way, but there are some differences in how you sort of find the information you're looking for and how it's laid out. So I will show you both websites today. Um, but yeah, that's just like, a, I guess, an overview of what the Australian curriculum is and how we use it as teachers in Australia. So let's get straight into looking at these websites and working out how to find the useful information on this website that will help inform our teaching. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the 8.4 Australian curriculum website. Uh, as you can see here on the landing page, it does have a link to the 9.0 website, but I thought I'd start with the 8.4 older version because I know some schools will still be using this one for a little while. Um, and so what I can do to start off with is look at this F to 10 curriculum tab. It's got three different areas that I can click on. It's got learning areas, general capabilities, and cross-curriculum priorities. Before I go into learning areas, I'm gonna to go to the general capabilities, and I'm just gonna show you what these are. So the general capabilities are the, as the name would suggest, the general capabilities that the Australian curriculum aims to develop with, within students uh, throughout their schooling. As we scroll down, we've got all of these capabilities here, so things like ICT, numeracy, literacy, all of those good things. Uh, as you can see, each of them has a little symbol. Uh, these will come in handy a little later on when we look at the learning area content descriptions because these will be referenced within that. So I just wanted to show you the general capabilities first. You can have a little read through those to see what um, capabilities the Australian curriculum develops. Then we also have these cross-curriculum priorities. So these are three other aspects that the curriculum aims to develop within students. So we've got Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures. We've got Asia and Australia's engagement with Asia and sustainability. Each of these is not covered in sort of like a standalone uh, subject or anything like that. They're covered across the curriculum and they sort of fit into different subject areas at different times. 
So for example, sustainability fits in really nicely with um, our geography topic on livability, whereas maybe Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures, that might fit in really well within Year 9 history as we look at movement of people and colonisation of Australia. So I just wanted to show you those as well. But now I'm going to come back up to the F to 10 curriculum and I'm going to go to the learning areas section. There's all these different learning areas and you would click on whichever one you are teaching. I teach humanities and social sciences, so I'm gonna click on there. Then I've got all the substrands within that. I'm gonna click on, on history because I teach year eight history. I'm gonna click my year level as well. I'm gonna go submit. And then it pops up with all these different aspects of the curriculum. So the first thing we've got here is understand how history works. We've got the year level description. Then we've got the content descriptions, achievement standards, and work sample portfolios. I'm gonna start up here with the year eight level description. And that sort of talks us through all of the things that the year eights are expected to do by the end of the year. As you can see here, the year eight history curriculum really focuses on the end of the ancient period to the beginning of the modern period. It then tells us some key concepts that we cover, such as evidence and continuity and change. And then it gives us some guiding inquiry questions as well. So this level description is sort of like a really general overview of what we cover in year eight. Then if I scroll down, we've got these content descriptions. So there's two aspects to it. We've got historical knowledge and understanding and historical skills. I like to think of historical knowledge and understanding as the actual content that I'll be teaching to my students. So this goes through all the different units that we might be teaching throughout the year. It also tells us how many of these to be choosing. So we've got to choose one of the societies and empires. Then if I scroll down, we've got to choose one of the Asia and Pacific societies. And if I scroll down again, we've got to choose one of the, where is it? One of the historical developments. Um, depth studies to cover as well. So looking at this might be a little overwhelming because we've got all of these different dot points, all of these different sections, and it can be a little bit confusing to work out what it is you're actually meant to be teaching. So if I look up here, it says that I've got to choose one depth study from the societies and empires section. My school, for example, we look at medieval Europe for this area of the curriculum. So that's what I'm gonna focus on at the moment. If I look at the Medieval Europe section, it's got all of these different um, parts of Medieval Europe that I'm meant to cover. For example, the dominance of the Catholic Church, continuity and change in society. And then if I look over here, it's got elaborations. If I click on one of those, it then gives me a little bit more detail about this specific aspect of Medieval Europe and gives me some ideas of what I should be teaching. So for example, the roles and responsibilities of the king, nobles, church, knights, and peasants. So now that I've got that information, it tells me really clearly what I should be covering for medieval Europe. I can use that to inform my teaching. If I wanna take this even a step further, another really useful part of the Australian curriculum is this little button here that's next to each of these content descriptors called Scootle. And if you go to this website, Scootle, it has a lot of different resources on there as well. You should be able to log in with your school email um, and access all the resources to teach that specific content descriptor. So that is a really useful thing to note as well. You might also notice that we've got all these little symbols underneath here again. These are the symbols for those general capabilities that I was talking about before. And these are, symbols are here because they are the ones that are developed within this specific uh, content descriptor. So just by teaching the students about the feudal system, we develop ethical understanding, personal and social capability, literacy, critical and creative thinking, and intercultural understanding. So that's just a useful thing to note as well. So that's sort of like the content that I should be teaching. So if I was um, heading into teaching a new subject, I would jump straight on here. I'd work out the different depth studies or the different content that I'm meant to be teaching. 
I'd select which ones I'm going to do and then I would begin my planning based off of that. The other aspect of the um, curriculum are these skills sections. So for this one, obviously it's history. So we've got historical skills. These are the different skills that teaching year eight history are meant to develop across the year. So I like to think of this section up here, all of the knowledge and understanding as the actual stuff that I'm teaching, the real content stuff. And then the skills section is like the skills that the students develop as a result of learning this content. So we've got chronology terms and concepts, historical questions and research, etc., etc. So what I would do is I would look through each of these and I would work out where I could cover that specific skill within my teaching, whether it be in a formative assessment task, a summative assessment task, or just lessons in general. So for example, we've got chronology terms and concepts. I know that I cover this one in the first assignment we do because the students create a timeline. And so I go ahead and I assign each of these skills to a different unit of the curriculum that I'm teaching to make sure that I cover each of them in a year. All right, there's two more things I'm gonna show you on this website before moving on to the other uh, 9.0 website. The first one is the year eight achievement standards. If I expand this one, these are sort of all of the standards that the students are expected to achieve by the end of year eight. For my school, we use these to create our marking rubrics. Um, and so each of these uh, little sentences would form a different criteria on our marking rubric for our assignments. It would depend on your school whether you do it like that, but um, I find these achievement standards pretty clear for what it is that the students are meant to be able to do. So for example, they've got to be able to explain the significance of individuals and groups and how they were influenced by the beliefs and values of their society. So I can make sure that the curriculum that I develop, the content, the lessons, all of those things, allow the students to really achieve that particular standard. The last thing I'm going to show you is the year eight work sample folios. As you can see, there's one that's satisfactory and one that's above satisfactory. I am going to click on the above satisfactory one and you can see that it then has all of this work from a particular student who achieved above the year eight standard. So I would look at this to make sure um, that my marking is accurate, I suppose and that it is on par with what is expected of year eight at this particular year level. So that's sort of all for the 8.4 Australian curriculum. What I'm gonna do now is take you over to the 9.0 Australian curriculum website. Okay, so I was going to try and cover the 8.4 curriculum and the 9.0 curriculum uh, in one video, but I've just looked at how long I've been filming for and if I try and cram them both into one video, it's going to end up being incredibly long. So I'm gonna pause this one here and end on the 8.4 curriculum. And then I'll put up another video that covers the 9.0 curriculum, just so that the video doesn't end up being like an hour long for you all. But I hope going through this 8.4 curriculum has been useful for some of you because I know some schools will still be using it. Uh, it was a little bit briefer than what I'm gonna do for the 9.0 curriculum, just because I know that most schools will be transitioning to that in the next year or so. So I think that will be the most useful uh, in terms of future use of the curriculum. But yeah, I hope you've got something out of this video. Stay tuned for part two about the 9.0 curriculum. I'll see you very soon in that video. Bye.